Hey everybody, welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the latest updates in the world of Nuxt and how that affects your projects and how that affects also your Prismic. So for that we have our in-house Nuxt ambassador Lucy with us here today. Hey, nice to see you Phil. You too. <laughs> So, uh, for everybody watching, can you give us a quick rundown of the big changes that have happened in Nuxt over the past year or so? Sure. So, well, the main thing that happened with Nuxt during the last year is that Nuxt released Nuxt 3 as a beta last October. Okay. And this, they keep working on it, and last April, they released Nuxt 3 as RC, which stands for Release Candidate. Okay. And this was a huge milestone for Nuxt as it marked Nuxt as being considered production ready by the Nuxt team. So people were able to start building production websites using Nuxt 3 while it was in RC. Okay, nice. So they could finally get their hands on with it and see how that affects real projects. Yeah, exactly. Because p prior to that, when, when it was in beta, things were moving like really fast and like things weren't really stable. But now that it's now that now that it's in RC, it's like considered stable, so people can start building on it. Okay, and how like, how does Nuxt roll out its changes in in line with the changes to view? So okay, so basically, well, quite simple to understand. Nuxt two was targeting view two. Yes. Nuxt three is targeting view three. Okay. And that's one of the main changes that is coming with Next 3 is that now when you will be building application with Next 3 you'll be using Vue 3 and so all the latest and greatest from the Vue frameworks that we all love here. <laughs> okay, and so like when Vue 3 is or ready to release, is Nux 3 already ready to go or does Vue 3 be out for Okay, a while yes, it has been like a trying to move as one but it's really hard because it's a huge community and ecosystem to move all together mm -hmm. so view 3 has already been released as stable last february so view 3 is now the default to build the view, view application mm -hmm. and the ecosystem is almost at the same stage but still like a bit behind with okay. next 3 which like still has some work to do to be fully like compatible and offering a great experience with view 3 but it's getting there, and like just in April, so like two months after, Next 3 was released as a release candidate, so it's considered stable, and you can start working on it with production. So it's almost happening at the same time that Vue 3 is, is the new default, and Next 3 will be the new default release soon. Okay, cool. And so what are the big changes for developers on their side with this update to Nux 3? As we talked, like the first big changes is that now we have Vue 3 yeah. as a new default. Another big change is, is that Nux 3, the new build system for Nux 3 is now based on VIT, mm -hmm. while with Nux 2, it was based on Webpack. Okay. And this is an interesting change because VIT is a new build system that is more modern and faster than Webpack used to be. And this enables for a lot of things uh, for the new uh, people working with Nux 3 as you not take benefits of all the new like greatest and latest coming with Vit, mm -hmm. so you have a nicer developer experience and also more performant website in production because of that. Okay, and so for people like myself who aren't 100% sure, can you explain to us a bit what, uh, well, for myself not, not sure at all, uh, what exactly is Vit? Okay, so Vit has quite the same scope as Webpack. It's a tool meant to build your application in development and in production. Okay. And what Vit does that is different from Webpack is that it has been able to rely on new technology to build your application smartly when in development. So you okay. have like quick startup quick quick startup time, quick HMR and everything. Mm -hmm. And in production, it also does that differently using rollup which is another build tool okay. and it does that so like you have like great uh, code splitting mm -hmm. and everything so that your application in production is still like fast and uh, efficiently built. Okay, so the main difference is that in development it's it's going to be a lot more developer friendly like you said, it's going to be faster, you're going to be able to get things done and make chops and changes in different places. Yeah. Whereas in production, it's only slightly different than normal, but it's still faster than someone developing with Webpack in the Yes, well, 
basic in production, like the output are, are quite similar. Like there's not really a lot to say about it. It's just like a lot of JavaScript code that gets minified and like splitted into chunk. Mm. So that's quite similar. What's changing is that it's getting to build like faster. Okay. So like you have faster CIs and things like that. So same idea, but giving you, as you said, a better developer experience when you're doing that side of thing. Exactly. That's the main point. Better developer experience and overall faster processes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And what else can we expect from Nux3 then? Another big change that is coming with Nux3 is called the Nitro Engine. So okay. the Nitro Engine is the new server engine that Nux is built upon. And basically, well, it's quite like philosophical, but the Nitro Engine allows Nux to be portable to any kind of environment. So if you want to run your Nuxt application on a Node server, you mm -hmm. can do that. Okay. If you want to run your Nuxt application on the edge, okay. you can do that. If you even want to run it inside uh, service workers on Cloudflare, that mm -hmm. also works. So basically, the new Nitro engine enables portability of your Nuxt application so that you can run it anywhere that works for you. Because we've seen that in the last few years, there's been like a lot of like new way to serve your application. And there's not only anymore a CDN or a server to the application, there's like a lot of other application, well, means that you can use to host your, your application. Okay, so it's it's opening the door for, for you to, to to deploy your project in, in any way you want, can Exactly. And also one of the great thing that is enabled thanks to Nitro, this new server engine by Nuxt, is that now your build output by Nuxt is standalone. What this means is that you can just grab this folder, mm -hmm. put it on a flash drive or anything, okay. and you have anything inside it that is needed to run your next application. Ah, that's interesting. So you don't need to have your node, mo your node modules anymore in production when you're running on a node server or anything. Okay. It's just like completely standalone. And that's really interesting because it simplifies a lot of things with CI builds, CI builds and things like that. Yeah. And it's also, well, yeah. Okay, that's cool. It's it's very interesting for something that sounds like it come right out of Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Nitro Engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah so the name is quite fun, I think, because well, we we are used in the Vue ecosystem of having a lot of French name, mm -hmm. and Nitro is not one of us. But well, it's yeah, it's yeah. I, I guess like they wanted to carry like some speed idea with it, yeah. which Vite Nitro. Yeah, a lot yeah. of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Marshall Core next. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so, can you tell me? So you would know this best. How do all these updates that have happened in Noxt over the past year? How are they going to affect our Prismic users here, the Prismic developers who are developing with Noxt? Okay. Already? So yeah, to make it clear, right now, like we had Noxt too. Yeah. Last year, they started like to release and allowed us to work on Next Three. Okay. But they also released Next Bridge. Okay. And Next Bridge is, as its name is quite implying, is uh, like uh, bridge. It's <laughs> a way to bridge <laughs> the gap between Next Two and Next Three for okay. existing Next Two users. Okay. And well. so basically, today as a Prismic user, what you can do if you want to start leaning toward Next Three. Okay. with your existing next two application is to start trying to upgrade to next bridge which should be an easier upgrade path for you and your existing next project because next bridge is bringing a lot of new features from next three yeah. while still supporting the old api of next two so this makes for like a lean a more linear like upgrade path for you okay. as an existing next users and for prismic users aren't Prismic module for Next, um, support Next Bridge and Next 2. Okay. But if you're building a new project and you can start building right away with Next 3, in that case, we have our Prismic module for Next 3, okay. which is available. And like Next 3, it is in an RC state. And so, yeah, it's a release candidate. So we consider it ready for production the same way that the Next team consider Next 3 ready for production. And you can start using the both together to build new application using Prismic and Next 3. Okay, so it sounds like you've been very busy getting ready for these updates. <laughs> yes, it has been like quite a wide ride, but we are working really tightly with the Next team to make sure that 
our module is always up to date with the latest version of Next3 and that everything is working seamlessly to offer you a great experience with yeah. Next3. That's good. It's, it seems like uh, that whole community is very reactive to changes and everything gets shipped out very fast. Yeah, yeah. we we have a cl well, yeah, like that's the next the next team is really open close to its community and that enables for a lot of transparency and also working together kind of mechanics so that we are sure that the whole next ecosystem is moving as one. That that's really cool. Yes. That's nice. That then you know as a developer you can then move on and not have to worry about other things catching up. Everything's ready at the right time. Yes, exactly. That's cool. Do you have any other further updates or anything you want to add about things that have happened in Nuxt over the past year, how it affects us, or maybe any insights? Yeah, um, one of the big things that we've been introducing in Prismic during the last year is full TypeScript support. Ah, very because cool. this is now like expected by everyone, yeah. and we needed to catch up as Prismic uh, on bringing better TypeScript support to any of our users. And in that kind, we didn't let down Next, and we also wanted to bring in better TypeScript support for Next users. And that's something that Next3 really enables, because with Next3, TypeScript is enabled out of the box by default. Is You can like, just like, write TypeScript right away. You don't need to have any extra setup. And also, Next, the Next3 team has been working really hard on making sure like everything is typed properly mm. for you. and almost automatically so you don't have even to know TypeScript it's just typed out of the box for you that's awesome and that enables really great developer experience because you know you're not like navigating in the dark anymore you know what you're dealing with mm -hmm. and uh, that's great so you know when you're making a mistake you know when you're, you're providing the right argument to function and really having TypeScript out of the box for Next uh, free is really great and at Prismic, we will also like caught up on that. And so for anything Prismic related, you have great TypeScript typing for everything. Awesome, awesome. It really seems like TypeScript is becoming the standard. Like, you, you yeah. like if you're not using TypeScript, you're not kind of doing it right now. Well, it, it's, it's fine still not to use TypeScript. Like we don't want to throw any shade on people that still want to rely on plain JavaScript. And as TypeScript might sound a bit overkill for small project, like yeah. if you're just making a landing page, you might not care much about TypeScript. But overall, it's a nice thing to have because it just like enables you with a better developer experience. And talking about things that are quite getting the standards, one thing that we can talk about regarding Next that is becoming the standard is Next is auto imports for everything. Okay. And that's also like enabling you with a better developer experience because thanks to auto import everything you don't have even to write import statements anymore yeah you don't have to worry about doing that you yeah. can just call whatever function yeah. or whatever exactly whatever function but also whatever component or whatever composables with with view free oh well and yeah like this is really that's great experience huge. because you you have everything like smartly loaded by next and you can just like write your code and not worry anymore about where is that file, where is that yeah. aliases and everything. You can just work. <laughs> that, that's gonna make uh, like a lot of the coding that you do like you're gonna see so many lines and you don't even have to think of it because you know the name of your components, you know the name yeah. of your packages and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And you know the name and TypeScript is also coming here to help you because it tells you like, yeah, this thing exists and it works like this. Wow. And yeah, it's it's quite mind mind blowing like the work that the next team has done. And because like it's tough to get all of that working nicely and not like tell you that something exists when it doesn't exist actually, <laughs> so yeah, like it's all working nicely and has been offering a really great developer experience for existing Next for users. Well, do you have any? Uh, maybe we finish off. You give us some insights on Next Four. <laughs> <laughs> well, Next Four is not coming. <laughs> anytime soon I guess okay. <laughs> but one thing I can say is that um, Next3 has been in RC state so like in a really candidate state since April okay. and now like uh, the team recently added back uh, static site full static site generation okay what, uh, what do you mean they added it back <laughs> yes okay what I'm adding back is that um, the next team has been working on Next3 and uh, static site generation was a feature of Next2 yeah. which wasn't fully available in Next3 yet. Okay. But they they caught up on that and they added that feature back because it's obviously okay, one Okay, so in the, in the beta and the release candidate and all that, they yes. 
Exactly. So, okay. so they they added that feature back because obviously it's not something we want to miss on and like it's something that a lot of people want when you're hosting yeah. on a CDN. Yeah. And so they added that back and that was quite like the last main big feature that people were expecting for next for next week to be really as stable. Mm -hmm. So basically what we can expect now is that in the coming month uh next three should be really stable and it should be next three should be the new default. Like next two will be something of the past after that. Okay. But no worries, if you're still on next two that's fine. There will still be support for it. So you're not in a hurry to move. But uh, knowing that next three is stable, that's a great milestone to it. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Lucy. It yeah, was okay. really informative. I learned a lot there. So cool. there you go. The latest and greatest in the world of Noxt. If you found this conversation interesting, make sure you subscribe to our channel because we've got a lot more content like this on Serverless, Gatsby, Next.js, like this video here. So make sure you dig into the channel and uh, get some of that awesome information that we've got on there. Thanks. <laughs>